Well, I've got some bad news for you and uh, some worse news for you. Uh, your server is dead. Whatever happened, whether or not it was a uh, electrical surge or, or whatnot, uh, your motherboard fried, it's dead. Not only that, but, but your hard drive, your hard drive is physically dead. Uh, there's no way for us to get any data off of it. Um, something must have happened, either the, the circuit board got fried when that electric surge came through, or the motor or something inside of this um, uh, died. So if there was just a corruption, if there, you know, the, the data just got a little corrupted, or if there was a virus that took out the operating system, we could get your data back no problem. Being that this hard drive physically died, it, it just it physically won't work. We can't get the data back for you, and uh, if you send it off to a data recovery shop, you're probably looking at two to three thousand dollars to get your data back. So we have the parts here, no problem. We can get you another server up and running. Just get us your uh, your backup files, and uh, you know, 24, 24 hours, we we should have you uh, good to go. Oh, <laughs> you don't have any backup files? You don't have any backup files? None, none whatsoever. Oh. Um, well, uh, you're screwed. I'm Eli the Computer Guy, and today we're going to go over backup systems. So, if your hard drive physically dies, all of your data is essentially gone. So, hard drives have moving parts inside of them. And if something happens, one of the platters gets damaged, the motor stops spinning, or any other number of problems, all of your data that resides on that hard drive is gone. Now, if you get a virus on your computer, or if you get a small corruption on your computer, even if the computer can't boot up, most people can get your data back pretty easily. Although you can't boot into the computer, somebody can put that hard drive onto a data recovery device and recover your data, again, relatively easily. It's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks, but you'll get all of your data back, all of your email, your documents, etc. Now, if your hard drive physically dies, you know, the motor stops spinning, the platter gets damaged, the, the arm inside of it gets damaged, your data is gone. You have to send uh, your hard drive off to a data recovery shop and you're going to be spending a minimum of $2,000 to try to get your data back and maybe a lot more up to five and $10,000 in some instances. So today we're going to go over backup systems because if your hard drive physically dies but you have a complete backup of what's on the hard drive then you don't spend $5,000 recovering the data. You simply go to your backup Restore the backup onto a good hard drive and you're off and running again. Today we're going to talk about types of backups, um, the media the, that backups are stored on, and some of the software that's out there to, that you can use to, to back up your computer and server. The first thing that we're going to talk about are types of backups. These are overall categories of how backups are conducted. Almost all uh, backup software companies use these categories, so if you understand these general categories, you will understand how all backups generally work. There are four types of backups that are currently used. There is what is called a full backup, there is a differential backup, there is an incremental backup, there is something called rsync, and the fifth is most soft, uh, backup software companies now use a combination of all of these. So what is a full backup? A full backup is exactly what it sounds like. <clears throat> the, the backup software creates a full backup of everything that uh, it is supposed to backup. So it backs up all the files, everything. So if you tell it to back up uh, a folder, it'll back up everything in the folder. If you tell it to back up a hard drive, it'll back up every single thing in that hard drive. It's very useful, but it backs up everything so it can be time consuming and use a lot of space. The next type of backup is called a differential backup. What a differential backup does is it backs up only what has changed since the last full backup. So you create a full backup of your computer and then let's say every night you run a differential backup. So 
when the backup happens, instead of copying everything on your computer again, the software will see what, what was copied before, it will see what has changed since that full backup happened, and then, then it will only back up what has changed. This obviously takes a lot less space, but if you go to do a recovery for your data, you need both the full backup and the differential backup to get all of your data back. So the differential backup backs up everything that has happened since the last full backup. So this takes less space than the full, but it's still, still pretty simple. The next type of backup is what is called an incremental backup. What an incremental backup is, is you take your first full backup, and then the first time the incremental backup runs, then it will back up everything that has happened since the first or since since the full backup has happened. The next time it runs, it will back up everything since the last incremental backup. And then when it runs again, since the last incremental backup, the last incremental backup, and it keeps going. So it backs up only what has changed since the last incremental backup. This is creates smaller backup files and is a lot quicker to do, especially if you're running backups at night because it's only backing up what has changed since the last incremental backup. The good part about this is that it's quicker to do uh, than either full or differential backups. But the problem is, is you need all of those incremental backup files in order to recover your data. So if something happens to one of those incremental backup files, then you can't get your data back. So incremental backups are faster. Uh, they take less storage space when they run, but they're more prone to problems because if any one incremental backup file disappears, you may lose all of your data. Then the, the fourth general type of backup is what is called rsync. And this is a new type of backup uh, that's only really been used a lot for the last few years. What the, what the rsync backup does is it only, change, only records the bits and bytes that have changed since the last uh, backup. What does this mean? During a differential or incremental backup, what happens is the software goes through and it sees which files have been modified since the last full backup. So if you have a Word document that you modified since the last full backup, it will then copy that entire Word document to the backup file. If you change, let's say, 50 pictures, it will then back up all 50 pictures because those have been modified since the last full backup. Well, what rsync does, which is cool, is it only backs up the bits and bytes that have changed uh, since the last backup. So instead of copying that full Word document or those 50 pictures to the, to the backup uh, destination, it will only back up the bits and bytes that have changed. So instead of backing up an entire, let's say, 5 megabyte uh, Word file with a lot of graphics in it, it will only copy over those few kilobytes that you have changed. So if you go in and you only change one paragraph in that entire Word document, it will literally only back up that one paragraph. This becomes very important uh, later when we talk about the, the medium, media that is used uh, to store uh, backup files, because when you're going over the internet, if you try to upload large files, let's say an entire picture, that'll take a long time. But if you're only trying to back up the bits and bytes of a particular picture, that's not going to take as long. This in Windows, they have a version of this in Windows called Delta Copy. So rsync originally was a Linux piece of software. They now have a version in Windows called Delta Copy. But again, it only backs up the bits and bytes since the last full backup. Nowadays with software companies, all of these types of backups are very useful. So many times the companies now create a combined version where they will create a, a full backup and then use parts of the incremental or differential or rsync to, to keep that full backup updated. So the full backup, the differential backup, the incremental backup, and the rsync backup 
are the four types of backups that are used when you speak about backup systems, but many of the pieces of software that now exist use a combined version of all of these. Now that we've talked about the types of backups, we need to talk about the format that the, the backup software stores backups into. So when it copies all the data off of your hard drive, how does it store that data? There's three general ways that the data gets stored now. One is that the software pulls all the data off of whatever is getting backed up and turns it into some kind of proprietary format and then stores that onto your backup media. So it takes all your pictures, your documents, your operating system, everything, and normally lumps it into one ball that only that software understands, and then it puts that onto your, 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 your backup destination, whether it's a hard drive, a CD, or a tape drive. The good part with this is that you can do something called a bare metal recovery. What a bare metal recovery is, is if your hard drive dies, you can pull the hard drive out of the system, you can put in a brand new hard drive, and then all you have to do is run a little uh, recovery CD that the software company will give you, and in an hour or so, your entire server or computer will be back up and running at the exact point of the last backup. So you put in the new hard drive, you run the recovery CD, and then you're back up and running. There's no problems. You don't have to install any operating systems. You don't have to do anything. You put in a new hard drive, run the recovery CD, you're back to where you were at the last uh, backup point. The problem with this, though, is if you need to get any individual prop, uh, documents or anything all out of the, uh, the backup that you created, you have to have their software to do it. So let's say you have an old server that has something called uh, Veritas uh, Backup Executive on it. The server crashes. Let's say you, you don't want to recover the server. You just need to grab a few folders off of there and dump it onto the brand new server you have. Well, if you still have those Veritas CDs, you can install that Veritas software into another computer and you can recover your data. If you're like most people and you lost those Veritas CDs three or four years ago, there's nothing you can do. All of your data is in this, this proprietary format and without the software to be able to access a proprietary format, you can't get anything out of it. So that's, that's the problem uh, when backup software stores into a proprietary format. The good part is you can do a bare metal recovery. You just throw in a new hard drive, run a, set, a recovery disk, and you're back up and running. The bad part is if you only need to get a few files or if something happens, you have to have the original software to be able to read any of the backup. Another type of backup is basically where the software simply copies everything in its normal format. That you get this a lot with, let's say, the Mac store external hard drives. You plug the hard drive, the external hard drive, into your computer or server, and it simply copies the files as they are onto the hard drive. So you can take that external hard drive, plug it into a new computer, and all the, the, the files are there to read. You can just double click on a Word file and you know start editing it. That's really good. So when it does this, when the backup software backs up in a normal readable format, you can just, you know, you can take the hard drive or you can take the backup, plug it into any computer, and you can just start editing or start opening files right then and there. The problem with this, though, is in readable formats, you cannot do a bare metal recovery. So let's say you're using that little Mac store hard drive backup routine on your server. The problem is, is if your server crashes, it out and out dies, and you need it back, in order to get a fully running server, you have to put a new hard drive in, then you have to load all the server software. Then you have to reconfigure the server. Then you have to load the antivirus software, do this, do that, do the other. And then finally, after about 24 hours, you can copy that data back onto the server and you're back up and running. So with, uh, with readable, uh, if it backs up into a readable format, like I say, it's, it's normally good for workstation computers or home computers because you can just take the, the little hard drive um, plug it into any other computer and you can you can read it right then and there. But if you have a, a server or something, it'll take you a long time to get back up and running. 
the last uh, format that uh, your backup software can store your data in is a really, really good uh, innovation that's coming around in the last couple of years. The backup software can now store everything that gets backed up in your server or computer into a virtual hard drive. So this goes into to virtualization, which is another class. But basically what the software can do is it backs up everything on your computer, uh, the operating system, the documents, server settings, everything, and then it stores all that data in a virtual hard drive. So the great part with that is if it stores it in a virtual hard drive and the computer crashes, you can bring in any other computer in the world as long as it has the right requirements, plop it down, install a virtual PC or virtual box, some type of virtualization software, and use that virtual hard drive and your server or computer is up and running lickety-split. So you just have a computer that has virtualization software on there, you take that virtual hard drive, you point the two at the other and you get it running and you have a fully functioning computer in and as long as it takes to, to copy the data to the new computer. So that's the latest, uh, that's, that's more technical if you, if you don't understand um, how virtualization works, but if you're a professional, that's a really good way to go. Now we need to talk about the media that your backup files are stored on. So when your computer is getting backed up, you, where, where do those backup files go? In the old days, they used to use tapes, these big or small, nasty little magnetic tapes. Those were the best solution out of really, really bad solutions. Tapes were really never, 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 ever a good idea. Uh, so even back in the day when we had to use them, they were still a horrible thing to have to use if you ever had to recover anything. You don't want to use tapes. If you're currently using tapes, you want to stop using tapes. Tapes are a complete pain in the butt. Uh, something that most people don't know is tapes only have a one year lifespan. So I have seen a lot of people and companies, they'll buy a set of backup tapes and then six or seven years later, they're still using the same backup tapes and they only last for about a year. That's one of the problems with tapes is they get damaged very easily and then if the tape is damaged, your backup is worthless. I've seen this happen at a company. They use tapes for backup, their backup system, their server crashed. They said, hey, no big deal. We run our backups every night. A friend of mine went to recover their backups, recover their, their information off the backups. Tapes were complete crap and uh, all their data was gone. So they thought they had been doing the right thing, but at the end of the day, they, you know, they had it. The next thing that, that we need to talk about, the next type of media, are CDs and DVDs. I know a lot of people are using these nowadays, and they're not bad as a short-term solution. So you want to back up your pictures to CDs or back up your movies or whatever to DVDs. You know, it's quick, it's easy. You go to the, the normal Staples or your office you know, depot store, and you can buy them. What most people do not realize is CDs and DVDs are not considered a permanent backup media. What this means is when you, when you put your data onto a CD or DVD, consumer CDs and DVDs only have a life expectancy of five years. However they're built, they do degrade. They do just start breaking down. So if you put your information onto a CD or DVD, you know, it's fine for a couple of years, but if it's really important to you, after five years, the CD itself degrades. So when you go to, to use it, it may be completely worthless. And that means, you know, if you take the CD, if you, you burn information to the CD, you put it into a nice little cover, you put it in your safe, you know, your kids don't touch it, your grandma doesn't touch it, your dogs don't touch it, still, after five years, that, that CD or DVD may be completely worthless. So it's not how, how carefully you, you work with it. It is simply CDs and DVDs are, are not considered permanent backup material. So again, if you're backing up something for a short period of time, they're fine, but don't back up, let's say, all of your pictures to a DVD and then expect it to be there in 20 years, because it won't. The best uh, media I find for backup 
uh, solutions are hard drives. You can now back up from one hard drive directly to another hard drive. What I used to do for my clients is put another internal hard drive into their computer or server. So whenever the backup routine would happen, it would back up to that internal hard drive. The good part with this is hard drives are permanent media. Uh, they, don't, they don't die or get damaged the way tapes and CDs do. And by doing it internal in the computer, the computer can transfer the data a lot faster because it's not having to go out over a network, it's not having to get burned to a CD, it's simply copying the data to an internal hard drive. I found this to be the, the best way of backing up computers. The nice part is too, there's nothing to, to plug in, there's nothing to change, so clients never forgot about it. Because it's always in the computer, the software that we used always would back up to it, we just do a normal old routine, the customer never had to do anything, never had to change any tapes or CDs, so it just worked, and just working is a good thing. Uh, you can do use external hard drives or fl little flash drives to back up your information. Uh, these are, cons again, considered permanent uh, storage, so they, they do work fine. Um, you can do FTP backups. What FTP means is that you can back up from one computer on the network to another. So let's say you have a workstation computer that your accountant works on. You want to make sure that she never loses her QuickBooks files. Every night you can have her little workstation computer copy or back up all of her little QuickBooks files up to a server on the, on the same network. That's, uh, that's pretty easy to do nowadays. And then of course there's, then there's a plethora of online backup solutions now. Uh, this is where your computer or server backs up to some storage on the internet. Uh, there's Mosey and Carbonite and uh, there must be a, you know, 20 different uh, major companies that, that do online backup. So online backup takes data that's on your computer and then, then backs it up online. So those are the, uh, the, the media that are used to, to back up your computer or server. Now I know one of the things that uh, you're thinking is you think, Eli, I've heard of this thing called off-site backup and that seems like a really great idea and that, that, that's what I want to do. So what is off-site backup? Off-site backup is when you're either using tapes or external hard drives or some other uh, media that, that, that you have a hold of to, to back up your server or, or workstations, that you take those tapes or those external hard drives and you take them off-site, you take them home, uh, so that if there's a fire, there's a burglary, there's a tornado, or there's Katrina, then your entire, like, the, the building that your business is in literally is gone. Um, so any backups that you keep on site are gone with, with the building, that you still have the, uh, the, the backup from, from the last time the backup was done. So you might be behind by a week, but you haven't lost all of your data. And this is a really good <laughs> theoretical idea. It's really great. So I have sold so many clients. I'm like, you know, here, here's a $150, hard, uh, $150 hard drive. Let's, let's sell you two of these. You, you're, you back up to this one week, you take it home, you back it up to this, the other drive, another week, and then you take it home, and you keep swapping those out, and you always have an off-site backup. Or back when tapes were around, you know, you do one, one full backup on a tape, and then you take it home, and then you, you swap it out, um, you know, every, every week or so. This is a really great idea, and I've made a lot of money selling you know, external hard drives or whatever for people for this, and I'm being very serious. You know, this, this is a great thing for you. <laughs> and then let me tell you, then I'll go back after about six months and I'll see those pretty little external hard drives and I'll see both of them sitting right beside the server collecting dust. And I'll ask the secretary or CEO or whoever the hell is responsible for trying to take the, uh, the, the backups off site, you know, what's going on? And they'll say, oh yeah, we've, we've been meaning to do that. I, I, thank you for reminding me. We, we will do that. And then I come back the next month and then the, the hard drives are there, still there collecting dust. So off-site backup basically means that you create some kind of full backup and you take it off-site to your home or into a safe deposit box or whatever. So that if your entire building burns down or gets lost in a tornado, you still have your data. 
Again, this is a really great idea, but in my experience, nobody ever does it. Out of the, the hundreds of business clients that I've dealt with, I have literally had one that does it. One. So, that's what offsite backups are. If you're worried about the offsite backup, we'll go into it in a few minutes, I would say do online backups because those actually happen. I don't know anybody who really takes the offsite backup home. Now we need to talk about the software that you're going to use to back up your, your server or your workstation. There are a lot of different types of backup uh, software out there. Uh, my company pers personally uses Acronis, A-C-R-O-N-I-S. I can't say enough about them. But again, there's uh, Veritas, uh, there's EMC Solutions. There, there's a lot of backup software out there. One of the first things I'll warn you is with backup software, again, you get what you pay for. So I know a lot of people think uh, or realize that Microsoft builds backup software into their products. So uh, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7 when it comes out, uh, Server Windows Server 2008 and 2003 and 2000 and NT even had backup software uh, built into it. And it's free and you've already bought the software. Well, there's a reason that professionals don't use what the backup software that Microsoft provides and that's because it it's, sucks. Um, we've had clients come in, again they go, you know, oh don't worry our server crashed but we've, we've, got, the, we've got the files from, uh, from Microsoft Backup. Microsoft Backup backed up our, our data and it was just corrupted garbage. And I can say this because it wasn't once, it wasn't twice, and it wasn't three times. It was quite a few times that we would have computers that were dead. They would give us their, their backup um, data, and it, was, it had been done in Microsoft Backup, and it was, just, it was just garbage, it was just corrupted, you couldn't use. So we would suggest don't use Microsoft. Uh, again, use Acronis. Uh, there's a company called EMC that makes a lot of good solutions. Uh, Symantec now makes backup software. The whole nine yards. The next thing that you need to realize is that backup. There's backup. Different backup software for servers, and there's workstations and personal computers. So a server. I'm not saying some computer that you you store a few files on and everybody shares in the house. That's that's not a real server. When I'm talking about server, I'm talking about Microsoft Server 2008, Microsoft Server 2003, Microsoft Server 2000, Server NT, small business server. If your computer, the, the software, the operating system, and it has server in the name, that's what I'm talking about. Now, if it does, you're going to pay a premium for the backup software that you run on that computer. Again, Acronis that we use, we love, I can't say enough about, the workstation version, the best, the absolute best uh, piece of backup software that they sell for your workstation computer, so the computer that you would be working on at home or in the office, costs $79. That's for the best. That's, that's every single feature that they can dump in there, they've dumped in there. <laughs> for the server version of that exact same software, it is $699 gives you pretty much the same features. Everything that you get in the uh, in the workstation version, you get in the server version. Why is the server version $699? Because they can charge you $699. And no, if you go out to Best Buy and you buy the normal workstation version and you try to install it on a server, it'll say, you have a server, go buy the server software. So it's true. So something to think about, and this is what we tell our clients, is if you have a little computer and all you're doing is sharing a few files, we suggest that you use a Windows 7 or Windows Vista or Windows XP machine to store those files. Because things like backup software, you know, it's going to cost you 70, 80 bucks to buy backup software for that little workstation computer, where it'll cost you $700 to buy it for a server computer. So something to think about and something to realize. Also, if you have a server, this is only for servers, that is running something like uh, Microsoft Exchange, the email server, or Microsoft SQL server, you have to make sure that the backup software that you're buying will back up 
your Exchange server or your SQL server. It's, it's one of those, those ways they, they get you is you'll buy the, the, the $700 backup software from some companies, but it requires add-ins to back up different types of things. So when you buy the $700 backup software for your server, it will back up the operating system on the server and any normal files. It won't necessarily back up your Microsoft Exchange or Microsoft SQL. So you may end up having to spend another $250 for an add-in for Exchange, another $250 for an add-in for SQL, and $250 for, you know, God knows what else you have. So something to realize is some, some of the server backup software will back up everything and you don't have to pay another dime for it. Some of it, they have add-ins that are required to back up certain features, such as email servers or, or, or SQL servers. So you have to make sure of that before you buy the software. And if you buy the software and you find out it doesn't back up your Exchange server just off the shelf, then realize you may be spending another two or $300 to get that add-in. So we're coming to about the end of this class. And the last thing that we should talk about are online backup solutions. Oh, <laughs> online backup solutions there. They're great things. They can also be a complete pain in the butt too, but, but generally they're, they're really great things. So online backup solutions are provided by companies like mozy.com, mozy.com, or Carbonite, or uh, what is it, Jungle Backup. I think Rackspace has an online backup solution. The nice thing with these solutions is when you use them, they give you the software. So you're not spending $700 or $80 for the software that you use to, to back up your computers. That's a good point. When the, the software backs up your computers, it backs all of it up online into the cloud. So even if you're in, you know, Katrina happens, even if your entire city gets wiped out, not just your business, but your home, your friend's home, your mama's home, your sister's home, even if they all just get flooded out and everything gets destroyed, all your data is fine. You can go off to Minnesota and restart your business with your data. Those are what is really, really good about these solutions. What can be bad though, and this is what you have to think about when you start doing online backups, is all of your data has to get piped through your internet connection. So when you're backing up all of your data initially, uh, when I first did this, I had 500 gigs of data to back up. It took a month and a half. <laughs> so the initial backup, one, can take for absolute ever to happen. I mean, literally, literally weeks. So this is a good long-term solution. You want a short-term solution in case your, your computer dies before the month and a half or two months. Um, but it's a good long-term solution. But you have to think about that. It's going to take a long time to pump all that data up into the net. Once it gets pumped up there, the other problem is if the server or whatever dies and you have to, to grab a large amount of that data back, that again, you're going to have to pull that through the internet. So if you have your backup data on a local external hard drive, you just plug that little external hard drive into whatever, you can recover your data, it's pretty quick. If you've got to pull 500 gigs of data out of the internet, that could take a while. I mean, that could take two or three days uh, just to get all of your data back. So that can be a problem. You also have to make sure that you do something called uh, bandwidth throttling on your backup software. So that month and a half when it's taking all that time to, to, to back up your data, in all of the software, whether you use Mosey or Carbonite, you have the ability to tell the software how much of your upload bandwidth you're going to use. So if you have a DSL modem, you get what, 756K upload speed. Well, if you don't tell it, anything, it will try to use that entire upload speed to do the backup. And the problem is all the normal stuff that you do on the internet might start slowing or crashing while it's doing that normal backup because it's using all of the bandwidth that is available to try to, to back up your software. So that can be a problem. So make sure you go in and you, you throttle it. So you tell it to use 100 kilobits per second or 200 kilobits per second or whatever amount doesn't, doesn't kill your internet service. 
The other problem is with uh, online backups is you cannot do uh, bare metal recovery. So it'll back up all of your documents, your pictures, even your exchange database and all of that. So all your database software will be fine. But you can't simply pull down all of that data and then just plop it into a server and make it run again. So all the data goes off. If you need to pull it down, it needs to come back and go into a working computer. So if your server dies, you have to reinstall all the server software, yada, yada, yada. It's basically, it's just not a, a bare metal solution. So that's what the online um, solutions are. You should also realize that just like with the, the normal software, there are business versions and consumer versions. Uh, with let's say mosey.com for $5 a month, a home user can back up unlimited amount of data onto their servers for $5 a month. For, um, for a business computer, a server costs like $7 per month plus, I don't know, 10 cents per gigabyte or megabyte or something. And a workstation computer costs $5 per month plus 10 cents per megabyte or gigabyte. There's different levels of service and all of that, but something that what you should realize is even for the online backup software, uh, there's different costs for the residential and for the, the business versions. So that was a class on uh, intro to uh, backup solutions for your, your computer or server. So now you understand the different types of backups that occur. Uh, you understand a little about the software that's used to back up your, your computer or server. Uh, know a little bit about online solutions and you know some of the problems and the good stuff about all this. The last thing that I'm going to go over is something serious and people don't take it too seriously, but I'll give you the warning and you, you can take it or leave it. Uh, <laughs> too many clients have left it. Is when you install your backup solution, uh, the new backup solutions, like most new computer things, are really stable and very reliable compared to what they were a few years ago. Um, I mean, old backup solutions from 10 years ago failed all the time. They were just they were, they were a complete mess and complete pain in the butt. New backup solutions, if they're set up properly from the beginning, um, they, they run smooth. I mean, they just they 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 work. They they function properly. And if there's a disaster or a problem, you have no issues recovering your data, and everything's great. The issue is is like all things with computers, all things in life, there can still be problems and there can still be failures. So you, as a user of backup software, you need to do a couple of things. And whether you're the technician that deals with the server or whether you're the business owner, you have to do these things. And you can't, you can't pawn this off to somebody else or, or shift the blame to somebody else. Because if your computer crashes, your, and your data is gone, and you don't have a useful backup, I mean, you're out of business, you're out of a job, I mean, it's, it's bad. So there, there's three things. One, whatever backup solution you use, you should understand. You should understand the good parts, you should understand the bad parts. Now, as a technician, you know, if you're a technician, you're like, yeah, yeah, no crap. Of course I understand the backup software I'm using. This is more for the business owner or the, the user of the computer that the backup software is running on. You obviously are, are probably not a technologist. You're not an IT person. But you need to understand how your backup software works and what to do if there's a problem. Because I know what a lot of people do is they call Geek Squad or they call somebody like me. We go in, we install the backup software. And then when there's a problem, you don't necessarily call me back or Geek Squad back or whoever installed the software back. You call somebody else. Well, they walk in, there's a good chance that they, they will not have seen the solution that you're using. And if you can't explain it to them, then you have a real problem. So you, as the owner of the backup software, you need to understand how it works and what to do if there's a problem. The next thing you need to do is look at the log files. <sighs> For Christ's sakes, look at the log files every once in a while. What does this mean? Well, 
most of the, the new backup software, whether it's online or whether it's this Acronis stuff that I was talking about, automatically backs up your server or your computer. It just does it every night or whenever you set it up. It just it goes through the routine. And you know what? 99.9999% of the time, it works fine. It works great. It, it, it goes along. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to press any buttons. There's no user intervention whatsoever. It just works. And that is great. That's what we want out of backup software. But that 0.00001% of the time, it will fail. And here is a weird quirk about backup software. When backup software fails, it not only fails, you go, okay, well, what's the, the worst thing? It fails, so it doesn't back up one night. No. For some reason, when backup software fails, it generally shuts down the entire process. So, when you run that automatic software, if for some reason it fails, not only will it fail for one night, but once it's failed, it then won't back up until some user intervention fixes why it failed. So you're trucking along and let's say for six months you check the log files and it's always working, so you forget about it. Well, six months and one day go by and something happens and the backup fails. It will not back up your computer again until you fix why it failed. So if you don't check it for three or four months, your system may not be backed up for three or four months. And not only that, but when it failed, it may have corrupted the file and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes on. So you, as a person who owns the, the backup system, that owns the computer, you need to regularly check your backup log files. Just make sure if it works. All you have to do is, is open up the, the backup software, look at the log, and it'll say, yes, completed successfully. And then you're probably going to see that. So, you know, you check it every couple of days or maybe even once a week. Well, you know, once a week is fine. But don't forget about it because at some point over the years, your backup will fail for whatever reason. It won't back up again until somebody takes a look at it. And, you know, if it's been a year since you've, you've checked those log files, that means all of it your last backup might be a year old. The last thing that you should do, generally, is verify that your backup and your recovery works. Uh, what I mean is, you know, you have all these backup files. So whether they go online or whether they go to a hard drive, you know, every once in a while, every two or three months, try to recover a few files from it. You don't have to try to recover an entire server, an entire computer. But just use the backup software and go in and, and make sure that you can pull, you know, five or six or a dozen files and, and recover them properly. Again, a lot of software changes. Microsoft is always putting out updates. These software, these, uh, these backup software companies are putting out updates. Something may end up break, breaking the process. So if Microsoft comes out with some update that somehow breaks your backup software, you may be, you know, you may be backing up your, your computer, but it's it's either corrupted or it's unrecoverable somehow, and you need to find a solution to it. Well, if you never try to do a recovery, you may look at a log file and you say, well, every night it's backing up. Well, you have no idea if it's backing up to a, the backup is good, if you can recover it, etc. So, once every six months, every few months. Go in and just do a small recovery. Like I said, just go in, do one pictures file or one, one word file or, or a document folder. You know, just, just pull a few, a few files and make sure that your recovery process works. So you follow those, those, those simple, uh, simple pieces of advice and you'll be doing well. Hope you enjoyed the class and I'll, I'll see you next time.